Uh, I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, uh, we're going to start by um, doing the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would all stand, please. Commission of America, would you mind leading us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, good morning again and welcome. My name is John Carvelli, and um, this is the California State Athletic Commission. This is our uh, public hearing of Tuesday, October 15, 2019. So welcome to you all again. Caesar, are we good to go? Okay, thank you, sir. And our lighting, is this my good side? Are we good? Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a busy agenda today and a busy evening, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, on a lot of different things, but um, I do want uh, we want to start by establishing our quorum. So, Mr. Foster, would you please call the roll? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chairman Carvelli? Here. Vice Chair Lehman? Here. Commissioner Senior Quitez? Here. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Williams? Here. Commissioner Ayala? Here. We have five commissioners, sir. We have a quorum. Commissioner Souter and Commissioner Araby are absent. Understood. Thank you. Um, uh, as far as opening remarks, um, Mr. Foster keeps us very well informed on many issues, including on a national and international basis with regard to combat sports. And I know that we, we had a death in combat sports recently. Well, we had a death, and then we had, uh, we had some deaths since our last meeting. And then this past weekend, Mr. Day is still in a coma. He's still in a coma. Yes. So uh, instead of opening remarks, what I would ask us all to do is perhaps a moment of silence. We don't have a bell here as we would in the arena, but maybe a moment of silence for all those combat athletes that are now no longer with us or, or sick or in, in, in struggling and an acknowledgement of, of all they risk for, what they, for the sport that they love. So let's do a moment of silence if we could. Okay, thank you all. Well, uh, we'll now back to our agenda is um, item number three, approval of the July 22nd, 2019 commission meeting minutes. Mr. Foster, do you have any comments about the minutes? No, sir. Commissioners, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? And then we can see if there are any comments. So moved. Do I have a second? I second. Have any commissioner comments about the minutes? Mm. Agenda item number three in our packets, available to the public. Seeing no comments, we welcome any member of the public to come forward, introduce themselves, and if they have any comments on our July meeting minutes. Seeing none, call the roll. Commissioner Ayala. Yes. Vice Chair Lehman. Yes. Commissioner Senior Quitez. Yes. Commissioner and Dr. Williams. Aye. Chairman Carvelli. Aye. Five zero, sir. Okay. Agenda item number four, we have an appeal. Um, are the parties here, Mr. Foster? Yes, sir. Okay. Appeal of Han Zong Lu, Dragon House Promotions Administrative Suspension for violation of California Code of Regulations, Section 390, issued on September 20, 2019. Mr. Foster. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, um, I charge uh, uh, Mr. Lowe with violation of Rule 390. Um, his promotion, uh, we, we received some um, blood work that was uh, not correct, uh, had been altered. Um, we, we caught it, um, and um, I then um, ordered, um, requested an investigation into it. Um, during the investigative phase, Mr. Lowe had denied knowledge of what had happened. Um, last Friday, um, uh, shortly after the investigative phase was complete, then I formally charged Mr. Lowe. Um, 
Last Friday, I received an email from Mr. Lowe's counsel, who's here with him today, um, and uh, she informed me that uh, the explanation of what happened, and uh, according to the email, it was Mr. Lowe's son that had uh, altered the, uh, the, 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 the blood work. Um, so at that point, that changed my, um, that changed the way that I looked at this as opposed to having to prove what I had charged Mr. Lowe with to the commissioners. Uh, I didn't have to bring the witnesses down. I didn't have to get the various attorneys um, involved. We're here now really with, um, uh, like I said in my, my recommendation, I'll have a recommendation for you. Based on the fact that, that he admitted it, um, and based on the fact that this is his first incident with the commission where he's been formally charged with the violation of the commission rules, um, I have a recommendation um, to the commissioners. Obviously, the commissioners can change, accept, do anything they want to with this. Um, but Mr. Lowe, um, a little background, has been, in my experience, been a good promoter in San Francisco area. He's been with us a long time. He does regular shows with us. He's cooperative. I enjoy working with him. But uh, the rules are the rules, and he violated the rule. Um, my, uh, my recommendation would be that he's suspended until January 1st uh, of uh, 2020, that he pay a $1,000 fine because um, I spent roughly. Suspended for how long? Until January 1st of 2020. Between now and January? Yes, because he's been suspended and he lost an event on November 9th that was calendared and approved. He already had the venue and was getting fighters lined up and that, that event was canceled. Um, then also his license be put on, placed on probation from one year from January 1st um, until January 1st of 2021 and an additional stipulation that he uh, have a minimum, uh, his medicals all be turned in um, for all of his participants uh, 72 hours before the weigh-in so the commission staff can, can do a thorough review of, uh, of his uh, medicals. Um, so that's what I have. There's been, it's been suggested that additional um, Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe some classes, but we'll, we can, that, that's for you. Okay, let me reiterate what I think you said. So it's basically a 90 day suspension now through the end of the year, $1,000 fine, probation for one year, a requirement for additional or early uh, submission of paperwork for, for events. Yes, How sir. early? 72 hours before the weigh in. That'll give us time to go through them. And what what kind of classes were you considering? You know, I, I don't know exactly how it works, and, and this would go to the legal counsel on whether we have the authority. But I was thinking of something like like a business business like uh, business ethics type type class, S something that you know that's done in San Francisco that that's that's you know not incredibly expensive for anything but something just uh, just so I mean I think he understands the ramifications of this but let's be clear commissioners change of medical is a big deal it's a big deal and this is the kind of stuff that some I mean some you know this is this is this is this is a big deal and um, you know he him coming forward and admitting this changed my my equation on, on what, what, what my recommendation was going to be. Um, but, uh, you know, some kind of, some kind of like class where he, he can just gain more knowledge to help him. So you're not sure about specific? Not specifically, okay. sir. Okay. So the parties are here, you said? Or yes, sir. So commissioners, what is your pleasure? Do you want to ask questions of Mr. Liu? Do you want questions from Mr. Foster? What would you like to do? Of Mr. Liu? Okay. Why don't we have Mr. Liu come up? You want them to stand at the podium? Yes, sir. Okay. 
I think it's pronounced Mr. Lowe. Would you Lowe. both introduce yourselves for the record, Certainly. please? Certainly. Uh, Tracy Green, and I'm Dragon MMA's attorney, and Mr. Lowe's attorney. Uh, I'm Mr. Lowe. How are you guys doing? Commissioner? Good morning, Mr. Lowe. Good morning. I would like to know, before the day of this fight, the day of this incident, <clears throat> and let's say for the year before, or even two years before this fight, how often did your son attend your events? Um, my son started helping me out probably around 16 or 17. When you he know. was 16 or 17? Yeah, but uh, he, you know, at the time he was helping me out, like, you know, check on things and, you know, uh, deliver messages where, you know, security having issues or so other how many, stuff. How many times do you think he'd done it? Um, probably every so event, every other event. May every every event. Every event he was there. Yeah. And did he have occasion to handle the medicals for you, the medical documentation for you, the lab work for you? No. This was the first time. Yes. Okay. Did he ever have occasion to interface between your organization and say the commission, the commission staff. Uh, what exactly the question? The inspectors and and your organization. Had he ever spoken to the commission staff for on behalf of your organization before this day? You mean like does he ever talk to the commission staff? Right, the inspectors. No. Um, what about camo staff? the amateur organization. Had he ever spoken to any of them? No. Had he ever handled any of the lab work or medical um, paper? done this before? Uh, no. Uh, uh, yeah. Understand the question? Not really. But did, did you ever? Did you ask your staff if they had ever done anything like that? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. I have and asked. had anyone done this before? No. Did you ask anybody if they had told your son what to do or how to do it? Yes, I asked. You asked him to look into it because you were busy with other things. Yes. He's not here with you today. No. It seems in some ways to me kind of convenient to have someone to kind of blame this on and say, well, he did this without my knowledge. Like, for instance, he, he, he pulled the records from your briefcase. Yeah. But he knew how, he hadn't handled medicals before. How, how, how would he know that they were there? Your Honor, I just want to.
I, so, I never have it anything. It would seem like that would be something you'd go, let me handle this, rather than telling someone who's never handled me records before to handle the unusual, out of the ordinary thing. So the question is basically like, when the commission say the fights got canceled, to me there's no making any difference. The fight got canceled, got canceled. There's On the other hand, he's saying, well, this is a big deal and stressful for everybody. So I don't, I don't think those things are congruent. They're, they're completely incongruent to me. And what he was saying, based on what I heard, was that the fighter said, my family's here, uh, people are here, and he told his son. Wanted, appeared the fight to go on. He's saying, Zong saying that he did not believe that, you know, if the fight had gotten canceled, it's not going to affect, you know, due to inadequate medical lab tests, it's not going to affect him that day, but he wanted someone to look into it. But all I can say is that you'll see he takes responsibility, he's responsible for what his son did. And that's all there is to it, and Dragon MMA is responsible for it, and, and he should have looked at the paperwork or had someone else look at it. and. It's not just blaming someone else. It's saying, here's how it occurred, and that's the truth of how it occurred, but, you know, Dragon MMA and okay. this promoter's responsible for it. Thanks, Dr. Williams. Yes. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Lowe, for coming today. And uh, I want to congratulate you on all you have achieved and your service to the community and not being able to read and write, and I did not know that, and you are, yeah, that's a very admirable thing you do, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, as vice chair of the commission, though, I am, I'm concerned about your ability to function as, um, as a, a correct promoter and follow our rules um, without that ability. And, you know, we have contracts, we have rules, we have medical paperwork. So much of what we do is paperwork, <laughs> for better or for worse. And so I imagine it's crucial that you have someone, your right-hand person or whatever, that you trust because that person is essentially part of you. And I don't know if you have that person, but you need that person with you at all times. Um, so that's, that's a big concern for me. Um, do you have someone like that? Yes, I do. We're not hearing you. Oh, he, they couldn't hear you in the mic. Yeah, yes, I do. Was that person at the at the fights in question? Um, <clears throat> she, yeah, it's my girlfriend. Basically, it's helping me out to read and write stuff. But at the same time, she was in the box office taking care of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and she's here today. You're, and she's here today. Mm -hmm. And she's here in the yeah. audience. In terms of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's willing to assume those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I am concerned going forward that you are in a vulnerable position with paper flying around and being changed very often on the day of the fight. And you, the buck stops with you, as this whole incident shows. 
I'm studying English every day right now. <laughs> Thank you. That was that was that, that's admirable, and that was not my point to criticize you. My my point was um, to have you know to do what you've been doing, which has been successful. Mm -hmm. um, but be sure you have someone at all times, you know, with you and available, so that you can do your job and and effectuate the license granted to you by the state of California correctly, yeah. professionally, and legally. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing more. So I think uh, Commissioner Lehman uh, um, asked the questions I had as well in terms of uh, ability to function and, uh, and, and carry on you know, this business as, as, uh, as should be proper. Uh, I'm not sure if it was in the document here, but how long have you been in, in this business? Uh, promotion, about a little over 10 years. 10 years and uh, to our knowledge is this the first time that uh, anything like this any kind of violation like this has happened uh, Andy yes sir okay all right those, those are my questions thanks thank you <coughs> thank the Commission for your time well, well oh, I'm sorry I'll let okay. you know when we're done okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so the fight was canceled and the, the bat never took place yes okay your you know your story contradicts itself you know, dr. Williams pointed that out so there's some holes there that I don't know if we need to spend a lot of time on that, but um, we should probably should get our story straight next time. When's the next commission meeting, Andy? Uh, it's in Sacramento in December, sir. December 12th. Um, you know, we'll have a, a motion and then we can have members of the public come up and further discussion, but uh, I'm not comfortable with this recommendation nor with the story. And I know we have a meeting coming up. And so maybe we think about a suspension until the next meeting uh, as my initial comment. But what, why don't we have a motion to, we have a recommendation from our executive officer. We have a motion to accept that or, or an amended motion. Ken, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, thank you. He's currently suspended with a temporary suspension. The appeal is from that. So it would be an option to continue the temporary suspension until the next commission meeting if it was the commission's desire to do so. Well, let, let, let me put a little finer point on what I was thinking. Perhaps um, we have a little more uh, transparency and then response into what Mr. Liu does at the events. Who is reading his documents? Who's responsible? Are they always there? Are they the same people? Are they trained to do this kind of thing and, and interpret the information? I think Dr. Williams was right on about that. I mean, his son reading these labs is, I don't know what that means to us, but it's not, I'm not comfortable with that. So, I mean, there's an opportunity to do some more uh, fact finding and maybe Can I make a draw some more clues. Yes, sure. Um, I mean, the reason I ask those questions is because I just find it incredible that somebody who'd never seen these labs before could figure out how to doctor one, you know? How to, yeah, how to falsify so. one, how to even figure out how to, how to doctor one up. So I don't believe that it was his son. I don't know who it was. I don't believe it was his son, at least not without instructions. Um, nonetheless, I think you're, uh, the chair is right. I think we maybe delay this till the next meeting, but in the meantime, I think Mr. Mr. Lowe can do something to show us that there are steps being taken, such as, um, I'm pretty familiar with San Francisco. So San Francisco State, San Francisco City College, they do have, especially state, their extension classes, there are business ethics classes um, that you can take. No. In, um, in the meantime, there are business ethics classes that you can take in the meantime. You can take an extension class. You can even take an extension class at USF. You can take those classes because that is important. I realize that you have this, um, this issue, but perhaps you can do it by way of audit and somebody can help you with that. Um, 
I don't know how else, but it, also in the meantime, I would suggest that you go to Sacramento and, and maybe sit for a day and see what our staff actually does and why it's important and why it's important that you get these documents to them ahead of time because they're very, very busy. And I also do know from your history with them, and although Andy, uh, Mr. Foster is very, very nice, and he says you're very cooperative and he likes working with you, that you have a history of crunching their time at the very last minute. And it's difficult um, when you work with them. Commissioner, um, you, you yeah. pretty much just made a motion. Did Would I? you like to make a motion along I make those that lines? motion. Well, hang on. Let me, let's see if we can get this. You're, you're making a motion to delay a decision until yes. the next meeting. Is that correct? Yes. And then you're also recommending, I don't know if we can compel, that, that there's certain courses maybe we could help with, with that. Uh, you, you all heard what, Mar what Commissioner Shinner Cuse just said, correct, gentlemen? Ken? Can yes. This? Can you Under help us craft this motion for her that she, I think, just laid out for us? Yes, I, I think with that? Uh, the motion would go something like this, that the, um, the matter will be continued to the re next regular commission meeting. The licensee is encouraged to complete a business ex ethics class uh, during the um, intervening time and that the temporary suspension will remain in effect until the next commission meeting. So can I add something to that or do I need a second on that motion? No, it was, that was just a recommendation. Okay, so, um, and then perhaps some further investigation and a report as to who is assisting, who has assisted and will be assisting Mr. Liu in future events. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll um, sir, this is, uh, I will certainly do that. It's my, to my understanding, I was not aware Mr. Mr. Lowe could not uh, write because I text with him. So maybe his girlfriend's the one texting. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't want to you know, belabor just, all this. If we could Please, just, address just, no, that. just hang Sorry. on. I'll get to you in a second. The story is not ringing true at all. I mean, it's, this needs to be looked into. Yes, sir. I mean, come on. We're doctoring documents here. This is not, not going to work for me. Uh, anyway, so we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second of that motion? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So um, I, at this time, I can invite, I can let you guys comment, and then we'll invite members of the public to comment. So go ahead. What do you have to say? I'd like uh, Mr. Liu to address. He's not illiterate. He does read and write English not well, but he certainly read the letters, the notices that were sent to him by the commission. He's not illiterate. He reads and writes English, just not extremely well. So that's... I'm yes, yes. Well, but then we're not being truthful well either. Uh, forgive me. If I, if I were you, I'd English is my honest, second language. I'm, I'm really sorry. English is my second language. I'm just very, not very good at reading and writing. That's okay. We understand that part, but you have to be truthful with us. I... Uh, okay. So, all right. Let's, let's have you guys sit down and see if there are any members of the public that would like to comment on this motion, this matter. You're welcome to come up and be heard. Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand, sir. Please come on up and introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Gene Fields. I was at one time a former member of the Athletic Commission. I had great times with them. I uh, work for the Minnesota City School District. I'm a safety officer, still currently employed. Um, I've dealt with Mr. Zoe for quite many years. Um, credibility is the key thing on this meeting from what I understand. Uh, as far as reading and writing goes, I've always seen him take care of the paperwork in the office and never seen anybody else do it but him. Um, for as many years as being in the business, you would think you would be in control, like you said, of everything you do, especially the medicals. Medicals are huge. It's a safety factor. I mean, that could be the difference between an HIV positive and HIV negative. I mean, it's, it's something that's insurmountable and can't even think of. There's other aspects that I believe that he's dealt in that probably the commission is not aware of. Uh, I am also a licensed manager through the commission. I, on 
your application, your manager application, on the bottom of it says expressively, do you have any financial interests of any fighters or uh, stipulations? And I put the names down of two fighters that I had, who I had currently put through fights through his show, Dragon House. Uh, we developed a slight relationship there. Uh, I was bringing these fighters over from Mongolia. He had intervened with us and was helping in the beginning to get them going. Uh, I think he saw the potential of what was going on there and decided to control things on himself. My whole aspect of the deal was that I put them on a standard personal contract because when they were going to come back from Mongolia and we were getting ready for the big show after this series of fights we had, I was going to put them on state contract. Right as I was ready to do that and having them set up, he proceeded to go to Mongolia and I have all the text and all the information set and quite a few texts from him. It's pretty interesting for somebody who can't read and write. Um, he went over there, basically backdoored me with the guy who was bringing them over from Mongolia and put one of my fighters on the Bellator card here. We had text back and forth and I asked him, you know, well, what are you doing? Uh, his comment to me exactly was, you are not in his corner, you're not the one training him, you understand me? Let me do my thing, stay out of my way, quote, unquote. Um, <laughs> to deal with that, I tried to do it as best as I could professionally without creating any situation for anyone. He ghosted me, that's what someone blocks you on Facebook. Got no communication. I tried to get back with the uh, the handler who was bringing the uh, the fighters over about, you know, payment and everything. Totally shut off. So a lot of this was due to his interference with, you know, my manager license, and I let him know, hey, I've got it. He had proceeded to go to the commission a couple times asking, you know, was this any good? He had no knowledge of the main contract I have, which is any very substantiated contract, very strong. Um, but this is what was created because of that. And I believe when it comes to credibility with someone, if you've been in this business this long, you don't do that. And maybe more into investigation into the past of what has been going on with these medicals might be very viable to see because I just, it doesn't sound right. So I just felt I needed to say my piece. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else like to hear? Please introduce yourself, sir. My name is Dave Hirschman. I run the MMA Gold Fight Team up in Sacramento. Um, okay. I didn't know Jean was going to be on the docket today, so I'm here anyway. I thought uh, I would speak if I may. Um, I've been in the business for 10 years. I have been working with Jean for about eight years as he's been promoting the shows throughout Sacramento, or I'm sorry, in the Bay Area. And I can safely say when it comes to the medicals, he's one of the very unique promoters that actually sends me the medical list on the front end. The majority of promoters that I deal with for whatever reason, they send the medicals on the back end. So all fighters are then scrambling or the managers have to call them to CSAC and bug Patricia and Sophia, and it's a pain in the butt. Zhang does it the exact opposite way. So as the matter relates to the medicals, I can safely say and testify on the front end, he's very good and he's by far the best one I've ever interacted with to give me the medical list so then I can go to my fighters and ensure that they are qualified for that competition in a great amount of time so this situation doesn't happen. So I'm here to say I have never had a problem with Zhang and I would fully back him. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one else, I have a motion and a second. Mr. Foster, Mr. Swenson, unless you have anything, call, let's call the vote, please. Commissioner Ayala? Yes. Vice Chair Lehman? Yes. Commissioner and Dr. Williams? Aye. Commissioner Senior Keitas? Yes. Chairman Corvelli? Aye. 5-0, sir. Mr. Liu, I don't think uh, an exemplary presentation today at all. I think you can do better. Mr. Foster seems to think so. So you have a chance in about 60 days to come back and work. please work with them in the interim. Be truthful, be credible, have answers for us. You, you heard what, we, what our concerns are, and then we can go from there. Thank you. Agenda item number five, review and possible action on petition to change decision for Aspen Ladd versus Jermaine de Rondemy on, did I pronounce that right, Randami? On July 13, 2019 in Sacramento, California. I know Aspen's here, David's here, I know Herb is here. So I wanted you guys come on up, Aspen. 
come sit up front. Herb, you want to come sit up? Please. Mr. Foster. Wherever. Yeah, sit right there, and then we can, you guys can sit right up front, right behind Mr. Foster, please. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, this was the main event on the UFC in Sacramento on July 13th. Um, the fight wasn't, uh, the, the fight was um, short, it was 16 seconds. Um, her manager, Dave, uh, come to me the night of the event and, and he says, you know, Andy, we're going to be, you know, appealing this. This wasn't, this, this was not right. I mean, he, he said some things. I'm sure he'll tell you the, the testimony. I talked to Herb about it that night. We had a training the next day. I talked to Herb a little bit about it then. Not much the next day. I talked to him that night about it a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're here now. I thought this warranted the commission's um, attention. Um, this was not a, uh, this is not the kind of decision that staff should be making. This is the kind of decision that, that the appointees should be making on what we do with this particular fight. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Notice there's no recommendation. <laughs> yeah, we noticed. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the, fight was, the fight happened. Um, Herb essentially stopped it. Um, she, on the first punch, I mean, I think Aspen uh, lined up for a hook. It didn't connect. Ran, ran, uh, Jermaine uh, threw, a, threw a straight right hand, knocked her down. I don't think she was unconscious because she braced her fall. And then from, from my experience, what happened at that point was Aspen turned. Um, I think she was real foggy in her mind, like she's dazed. And I think she went back to her training and probably attempted to do something, uh, what's known in jiu-jitsu as sort of the technical stand defense. I think she was, I think she was looking to do that. You should probably watch it. Herb, yeah. please don't interrupt. Herb, please don't interrupt, sir. Thank you. We'll get um, to you, don't worry. Now, um, how we got here, um, I just want to say this and, and preface this, commissioners. You know, I, I, I make all the assignments, and 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 I'm going to say this right now, and I'll say it again. Herb is the best MMA official that this commission has as a referee. You're going to see him over and over again. Uh, I think he's the the best referee in the world right now, active referee, and um, I think his uh, you know I I exemplary. So I've got no issues with like. There's no, there should be no issues with the credibility of the referee, like whether he, the, the really what we're talking about is the stoppage, and and I just, all of you already know Herb Herb Dean anyway, so I just wanted to say that though on the record, uh, for the minutes. You're going to show us the video. Yeah. And Commissioners, can you see? We've seen it. Just see that PowerPoint first. And then Herb can present to us. Herb, do you want to track us through this? You want to come up to the podium, please, and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, Herb Dean, um, referee of the fight. Uh, do you, were you going to watch something, or did you want me you to guys explain go through the PowerPoint? Because that PowerPoint is theirs, I believe. Oh, okay. I didn't. I thought. It yeah, it wasn't. What's not mine? Well, let's, let's hear from you since you're up, please. Okay, yeah. Um, um, she hit her with a big punch. Um, as she spun, um, I saw her what, um, as she was standing and going down, I saw uh, referees, we say, imploding. She started to uh, collapse in on herself. It means it was a big shot. She was, uh, at that time, out on her feet. She goes towards the ground. Um, she reaches out and steadies herself. So that means that she's starting to recover. Now, um, what I see in that situation is my job, after someone takes a big shot, I need to see, especially if, they're, if uh, they've been concussed, if they are recovering enough to deal with what's happening. Um, she goes down. 
on her hands and knees. At that point, her opponent, I need to balance with what her opponent's doing and what is she doing. Her opponent is uh, sometimes, a lot of times, after someone drops someone, they'll jump on them to cover them and keep the position and start trying to throw punches. She sees that she's unaware and that she's still dazed, is uh, what I see also, and she takes her time to line up another very big punch. At that point, um, Aspen is not, I don't believe that she uh, is aware of where her opponent is, and at that point, I don't believe, I don't see her doing any of the things that I would call intelligent defense. She's not turning, she's not, she doesn't know where her opponent is, she's not doing anything to try to find her opponent, and she's not doing anything to uh, uh, make herself hard to hit. And I'm doing, I assume she's doing these things because at this time, she hasn't recovered enough to do it. Um, consciousness, I mean, I, we've all, I mean, we haven't all. I've been punched and I've been choked out. And uh, when you're unconscious, uh, sometimes uh, we, we don't know, I don't know why someone's doing something. When I'm refereeing a fight, all I can go by is what I'm seeing and assume that they're doing the best they can. Before you go, Commissioner, do you want to ask questions of him or hear from Aspen next? Or? I would like to ask questions of him, but later. Okay. Herb, we, we'll bring Aspen up now and uh, so she can present to us. Aspen, come on up. Please, will you both uh, give your name for the record? I'm Aspen Ladd. Dave Hirschbein. Uh, if it would be okay, I'd like to make an opening statement and obviously feel uh, free. Yeah, everything's okay. First of all, speak up, speak loudly. You have every right to make your argument. That's what we're here for, so go for it, okay? Thank we're you. listening. Thank you. Um, so obviously we want to thank you, CSAC, for even hearing the case. We realize it's unprecedented at times to, to be brought forward, um, but we feel we do have something to talk about today. Um, respectfully, we, we do know Herb's credentials and we know how good he is. This isn't about Herb, um, and we respect Herb very much. And I've known Herb for many years, so there's nothing personal. It just is what it is. We do believe Herb got it wrong on this one night. So we do feel very strongly about that. Um, in terms of my credentials, I've been with Aspen since the age of like 15. I've known her forever. I've been in her corner for every single fight. I was there the night of the fight. I was in her corner. Um, I want to say something, though. After the fight, the very first thing that happened backstage, we've all been around combat for many years. Most fighters that lose, and Aspen has never lost before. We've been going around the world for seven years. Okay. Most fighters that lose a fight, they're devastated. They're like this. They, they can't control the way they're feeling. They've never felt these feelings. The very first thing Aspen said when we went backstage and we were sitting in our dressing room, it was Aspen and our three cornermen, she said simply, would this fight have been stopped if it was the males? That's such an unusual thing to say for the very first thing to come out. And the reason I think she said that was if you're kind of in the MMA industry and we all kind of talk about it amongst managers and fighters, we all know and we all feel female fights are stopped early. That's very much talked about in the community of fighting. And that's not because of her, that's just in general. So I'm thinking at the time when Aspen says that, yeah, Aspen just got caught up with what we already know is already talked about within the media, within the MMA uh, landscape of the UFC specifically, because that's the levels we're talking about. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, I also want to make it known this was the fight to set up who was going to be getting the next title shot against Amanda Nunes in December. So if you understand the financials behind these contracts, there are pay-per-view points in these contracts. Aspen has a very lucrative contract on pay-per-view if she gets that title shot. Same with GDR, I suppose. So the end result was from her decision to stop this fight, it's now already been named. GDR gets the next title shot in December against Amanda. We're talking about millions of dollars. So this is a really big deal, hence the reason why we wanted to bring this case forward. It's not specifically about money, but we have to talk about the money. This is about our women being treated equally in the sport of mixed martial arts. That's what we feel this is more about. If we can go through the frames, I'd like to do a t quick technical breakdown. And, and Herb, just so you know, I didn't put this together. This is new to me, the frames. Okay. Well, who put this together? I did. You did. Yeah, which is very helpful because you'll get a better understanding through the frames. Yeah, and so, so obviously the fight starts. What's happening is Aspen, what we call, throws a lazy left hook. 
If you go to frame two, GDR counters with a right cross. Okay, if you go to frame three, Aspen falls down. This is where the training comes in to what Andy pointed out. She has done this a million times in training. If you go to the next frame, I'm just gonna come out here for a moment because you're gonna see a jiu-jitsu video. Aspen's doing the training move where she's posting the audio. Sorry, the audio. The audio. We need the audio. Yeah, just, just tell us. Just describe it. Or maybe Have Aspen demonstrate. Maybe Aspen can demonstrate. Aspen, would you please demonstrate? <laughs> Try and put yourself in the, uh, you know, you were down and do what we trained to do a thousand times in this position if you were to get rocked. Okay, now we lost you on the audio. So it's okay. So it's Aspen was, was articulating that simply she was doing what she's been trained to do. At no time was she unconscious. I, I, what's interesting too is when I saw this this morning for the first time, if you could back up a few frames, look where Herb's position is. Go back to the very beginning. Okay, let's look where Herb is on the left. In Herb's written comment that came in through the commission, Many, many situations. In um, when you fought, let's see, when you fought Rodriguez, I think it was a camel fight. Oh wow, yeah, that was that was a long time ago. <laughs> Do you remember that you took some mm -hmm. punches to the face? Actually, at the end of the first round, was it? And you took the decision, and you survived the and you survived the round, and then you ended up coming back and winning that fight, right? Yes. There are many times when you actually manage to actually survive more than one punch, right? Just every fight for the most part, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Has somebody ever told you that because you're a female fighter, you could only actually take one punch? I've had people question my chin more so than a male teammate, for example. But that's just, it's common. It's common for people to believe that, that we function at a lesser degree than the males of the sport. Yeah. Has somebody actually ever told you that because you're a female MMA fighter that you shouldn't be engaging in ground and pound or some techniques like that? No, I've had the very common, oh, you're this or that, or maybe you look nice. You, sh you definitely shouldn't get hit. You should go do this. You should go have kids, you should do, you can go to school, don't get hit in the face because you're a female kind of thing. That's common. I don't think I have anything. Do I have any questions? Yeah, I, I guess <clears throat> part of my question is, um, is, is you all's position that we should be uh, evaluating, addressing kind of the culture of MMA as relates to male versus female fighters, or are you saying that we should be addressing the issue of whether this particular instance we should reverse Herb's on-site, in the thick of it decision? You have two issues at hand. You have a fight that was stopped prematurely, we feel, and then you have the bigger issue, which is, yes, are female combatants treated equally to the males? That's the bigger issue. Are you asking us to answer that question or do something about that I don't think I don't think we're at the forum right now to answer the second part, I so agree. I'll take the first part. And yes, we would like you to consider a no contest. Aspen was 8-0 going to this fight. I talked about the financial implications. She's now 8-1 in a perfect world. Her record would go to 8-0-1. She'll never get that opportunity back against GDR in terms of like in this situation. She has to now go through the cycles again of fighting all over again, and she has to work her way back up. So we are asking you to look at the point one, but point two, we actually feel is about 10 times bigger. Are women being treated equally compared to the males at the UFC level? Um, I don't have any questions, and to me, this, to me this feels a lot simpler than it's being made out to be. Um, I, uh, I understand our role here as a commission is basically to protect the fighter 
and we've hired some great uh, referees, allegedly the best in the world, to make those decisions uh, when when somebody's being protected in the ring. Uh, this, you know, depending on who you ask, could potentially could have gone either way in terms of stoppage or not stoppage. But based on the explanation that Herb gave, uh, in terms of his reasoning, and, and understand, obviously, I, th I think everybody understands here that these are decisions that are made very quickly with the interest of the fighter in mind. Uh, all, all of this extra information about, you know, the stakes uh, in terms of what the outcome of the fight was, to me, is irrelevant. Uh, what is relevant to me is that the fighter be protected. I agree that... Uh, uh, at least for a split second there, there was a little bit of a, you know, unconsciousness and maybe uh, the motion at some point, in terms of the, the motion of protecting yourself may have come there at some point. But in that particular split of a second, I thought that uh, the fighter, uh, your opponent was basically swinging for the fences there. Uh, and I think it would have been pretty detrimental. Uh, I watched the fights over the weekend <clears throat> and I thought there should, should have been some stoppages there. Obviously, Herb wasn't involved in, in any of those, the ones that I saw. But uh, I thought, personally, I think this was the right stoppage, uh, just based on the facts, based on the video, uh, and based on what I interpreted the state of the, uh, the you know, of the fighter to be. Uh, those are my comments. Uh, that's just my perspective. Can we respond? Oh, hang on. Can I? Come back let everyone get a chance. Can, uh, can I respond to it? Yeah, you can respond to it. Yeah, do you have anything else you want? We'll get to everybody. Everybody hang in there. Yeah, I just... I just want to say, as a former professional boxer, I'm you know, very aware of the concern of the unequal treatment, or a concern of unequal treatment, and, that's, and thank you for bringing that issue up. And we are having a symposium um, this evening at 5 o'clock. At five o'clock, right here, and we on this subject, this exact yes, subject, exactly, yes, exactly, on gender, well, uh, gender equality in combat sports. So we would love for you to yeah, come and look at the to, tonight's to, agenda. To stay and mention it. Um, um, and I'm a boxer. I'm not an MMA person, but I have been going to MMA fights. I think it was just last weekend. And you know they're bloody, and everybody lets everybody beat each other up, and you know, but that's the way it is. That's that sport and um, this sport, and this definitely seems not on par with how I've seen male fighters treat. I'm just gonna, whether it's because of gender or not. Thank you. So, let's just throw that out there. Um, Aspen, have you worked with her team before? Ever? I fought 19 times, so many times, and I'm, I don't remember if we have in the past or not. Do you? No, I'm, I'm not sure either. I've seen them fight. So I, I, but I, I'm aware of you as a fighter, and uh, you guys haven't been in the in the octagon sure together. together. I've refereed her before. Yeah. You have not. Or, yeah. 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 Martha knows. Sure if you have not, they don't know the Martha. We're knows. around each other so often, so okay. many fights. Like, I've gone okay. through yeah. Herb's entire record and have not worked together. Um, have you experienced Aspen something like this before? Very very similar situation where you felt like there was an early stoppage in one of your bouts. No, I have suffered one defeat as an amateur, and it was after it was a decision. It went the entire time, and then this was my first as a pro. And so you're not used to losing. Right? No, which is great. But you, yeah. So okay, okay. Um, you said you had more comments. Um, I, yes, I have some questions of Herb, and then I brought some. I brought another PPT. I would like to show, if possible. You want to show that first, and then we'll talk to Herb. Yes. Can you put that up, please, folks? Patricia, thank you. <clears throat> Am I able to make one more comment? Uh, yes, this is coming go ahead. Up. So to your, to your point, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Chairman. Ayala. Ayala. That's the uh, this is the chairman. That's okay. I'm sorry. We're I'm all, on, this is new to us. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're used to being in the gym, not, not in the courtroom. Yeah. So, uh, it's not a courtroom either. <laughs> And that's our other fighter there, by the way, Alex Max Griffin. All right, so to, to your point, though, I just wanted to address that. Um, I respect what you said about the financials, but it should be known what was going on behind the scenes. It just should be. That's a fair point to make, I feel. But I do want to make a comment to what you said. These are prize fighters at the highest levels. They deserve to go in there and do their job. 
that needs to be made no you thank you back to that sir uh, no, I, I think I've stated my opinion. Uh, I thought the referee made the right stoppage uh, based on my view of the video. Uh, and so I'm just won't vote up here. That's okay. Uh, and that's my perspective. So we let him, we let him add something. You're going to come up in a second. Or let's just see this and then you're next. Go this ahead. is a UFC. And five times as the World MMA Referee of the Year, years of training, um, Herb Dean's Academy, and you know having the courage and professionalism to come here to talk about your fights. Um, but let's start with just generalities. This. Lad versus Durandamy fight was a UFC main event, right? It was a main event fight, right? Who are you asking? I'm asking her. It was, yes, it was in the main event. Okay, that means that means that UFC as a promoter felt that. They believed these two fighters deserved to fight in the main event because of experience, because of exposure, because of who they were. They felt they, they deserved the main event match, right? I agree. I think that's okay, why they wait. put it in the main event. Right. And it also meant that this commission approved their experience as main event fighters, right? I, I agree again with you, yes, because uh, okay. they were um, they were in the main event. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So at the time of the match, Durandamy's record was eight and three, right? I'll take your word. All right, and I will tell you that Aspen Lad's record was eight and zero. Oh. Do you remember that? Once again, I'll take your word. Okay, and that was really the same record as Ronda Rousey's when she fought Sarah McMahon. Do you remember that? Uh, do, do I remember the records at the time? Yeah, I mean, of that was the, the fight that you... No, that I, you, I, don't have, I don't have every fighter's record in my mind memorized. I'm not when sure they fight. Where, where but, this is going but, and why this is but, happening here. I'll probably. take your word, Martha. Okay, I'll take because, your word. Because what, what that's, not, that's not like a baby Maybe. fighter is what I mean. That's somebody with some, some experience. Oh, you're saying she's really good. She is. Okay. Okay, so, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I knew she was really good uh, before you told me. So because, I agree. Because where I'm getting with this is you as a referee and you as an official of your stature, part of, part of what you're doing inside the cage is other than safety, what you're doing is providing a place for them to show off their their talent, their ability to fight, without any kind of preconceived expectations. Yes, right? prize fighting. I'm familiar with it. Okay. Yes, this this is prize right? fighting. It's on televised. Okay. It's a it's a professional fighting. It's a so, it's a sport. Or, excuse me, sir, Commissioner. Uh -huh. I don't know where this is headed or what, why you're lecturing us, him. Can we come to a point and a question, or a comment or a motion, please? Well, okay, so I'm going to make a comment if I'm not allowed to question him. No, this. keep going, whatever you want. <laughs> That's not questioning, you're lecturing. Can we, get, can we keep the meeting moving? So, Let's make a point. So the point is, in order to no contest this, we have to find some sort of violation of a law. In my opinion, even, even well, it's not just an opinion, even if it is a perception that there is disparate treatment of fighters, disparate treatment between men and women, even if it's not intentional. I'm not saying that it was intentional of you in this fight. The fact that this fight was stopped after one punch 
is a violation of the anti-discrimination laws in the state of California. And that is not okay, even if it is not intentional, because that is disparate treatment. Okay, I won't and argue, I won't Gordon, argue that. Sir, before you say okay. anything, I don't think you're being, you're asked, being asked a question, and if I recommend that you maybe don't say anything. That's my recommendation to you, sir. Okay. If you have a question, Commissioner, great. Can we get to it? So there is something there, I do want to say about, okay. So this is my statement then. Yeah, make your when statement. We, when we proposed our, for example, transgender regulation and we sent out the notice of proposed rulemaking, we said the broad objective of the regulation is to promote fair participation in combative sports and to prevent discrimination on the basis of gender and gender identity. And the benefit of the proposed action was listed as to ensure fairness and the prevention of discrimination. That means that we want everybody to be able to participate in our sports without discrimination. That also means that we subscribe to the anti-discrimination laws in the state of California. So that also means that we must ensure that all of our athletes get a fair shake when they're inside the ring or inside the cage. Even when there is a perception of disparate treatment, we have to intervene or we become, we become part of the problem. So I see this as a very, very early stoppage. You do not stop a fight with one punch. She may have lost anyway, but you give her the chance to lose on her own. That's why she's a fighter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Her, oh, just one, two, one thing I want to say. Uh, okay. I do not, I, I do not, uh, I'm not a gender discriminator. Good. I, uh, I'm not I, saying you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just saying that yeah, about fine, myself. That's fine. I don't uh, I have a discriminate. Question for you. Did you based, stop this fight because Aspen Lad's a woman? No. Okay. Fair and enough. on top of it, uh, you guys asked her some questions about uh, her chin and whatnot. Aspen, I, I'm not questioning Aspen Lad's chin. Everyone knows that Aspen Ladd has one of the stronger chins in her division. So I'm not saying that. What I'm basing, I want to, I'll tell you about my decisions. I saw you've done a lot of work. You brought some other fights. And uh, they were kind of choppy. But actually, those are some of the fights I was going to bring in as an uh, example. Because well, I said that um, my job is to evaluate the opponent's response and the fighter's ability to withstand that response. That's why uh, one of the things we talk about is intelligent defense, right, Andy? Yes. Intelligent defense. So that's what that is. It's here is the threat, and is the fighter, because the fighter has been hurt, the fighter is recovering. As they're recovering, are they able to deal with the threat that's being offered? Um, one of the matches you threw out there where the guy got dropped, the other fighter, as I talked about, the threat was different. The fighter chose to jump on the other guy and maintain position and not have leverage to throw very strong punches. So at that time, I have to make the decision that the threat is actually not that bad. The fighter has chosen to say, hey, I'm going to go for, instead of going for the home run, I'm going to go for the position and maintain the position. This giving the other fighter a chance to recover. In the situation, and also some of the video you show, you're showing video and describing things that are happening in the fight after I've already stopped the fight. Those things in the video and the pictures, I had already stopped the fight. The difference with that match was when Aspen got struck, she got, uh, when she got hit, I have to balance on what I'm seeing. And what I saw is she was totally turned around from her opponent. And during that time, I, I believe that when, she, when a fighter's been turned, anytime uh, someone's been punched like that and they end up facing the other way, they don't know what's happened when they, they don't understand what's been happening. They don't remember all that. They know one minute they're facing their opponent, next minute they're looking at the ground. I see the fighter, Jermaine, very wise fighter, she doesn't decide to jump on her. What she decides is, hey, she's staring at the ground. She's not even trying to figure out where I'm at. So I have all the time in the world to walk across, step in, and throw a very big shot. The uh, way I would describe it is 
it, to me, it looked like someone at a bar, not knowing that someone is coming up behind them, like a about punch. to punch them, about like a sucker punch. Okay, Herb, mm -hmm. I think you you've made this argument a couple of times now, and I really appreciate it. I think it's clear to us. Mm -hmm. I have an agenda item. I have a okay. responsibility. It's okay. I'm not lecturing you. Mm -hmm. To keep this meeting moving, to take action on the agenda items that are presented to us, we have a request to, to make this a no contest. We do not have a recommendation from our executive officer. We have a presentation from the referee. We have a presentation from Aspen Ladd and her representatives. And so I will ask for a motion at this point in time. We'll, we'll need a second. We can have more discussion about the motion. Then we can invite anybody from the public to uh, make a comment. So now's the chance for a commissioner to make a motion um, to keep this thing moving. Commissioner Ayala. Uh, I move that the decision stand. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Commissioners, have any comment on that? We'll invite the public then to come up and comment on that motion. So we have a motion to let the decision stand. Um, and so members of the public are welcome to come up. And yes, Roy, come on up. Roy Engelbrecht, fight promoter. Maybe I was supposed to be here this morning for just this agenda item. And I'm going to come at this as an official and as a promoter. I was blessed for 30 years to be a basketball and baseball umpire in the Big West, in the Pac-10, in the WCC. I know those moments in time over 30 years on making calls. As you know, I'm one of the few promoters that try to make every commission meeting. And over the 30 years, I have seen these appeals come before the commission, where we're looking at a stoppage, a miss. I miss calls. I can think now of calls at UCLA on a play that I missed, I missed. But I've never heard an official at these appeals say they missed the call. This is not about Herb's ability, Jack Reese's ability, Tom Taylor's ability. They're great officials. I was the youngest official in the Pac-10. But I missed calls. And I would like to see officials. When I miss calls, I was a good official the next game, and the next game, and I missed the call. And stand here and say, golly, I wish I would have had that call over again. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have called that as a charge. That should have been a block. It cost them the game. And I missed calls. As officials, we have egos. But you know what? We get paid to make calls, and we miss some calls. And stand here, officials, for the next 10 years that I'll be coming to official meeting, and if it is, looks like I missed that call, then I missed the call. And then let the commission make that decision. As a promoter, <laughs> selfishly, I hated this. I had a good fight. This was going to be a good fight. <clears throat> it stopped too soon. Or he counted too fast. And I've, been, I've seen more fights than anybody else here today over 33 years. But in closing, I've missed calls. I wish I had them back. But I will admit I missed calls. And we have to be big enough to say, I missed it. Thank you. I agree. The only other time I've ever been here, Just I've ever come to one of these meetings, yeah. was to say I missed a call. The only time I've, this is the, the second time I've been here. And the only reason why I came was I think that she deserves transparency. If I make a decision, she deserves to hear why. But the only other time I've come here okay. before this commission to talk about one of my calls is because I made a mistake, and I wanted that mistake understood. Okay. Yeah. So just so you know. Okay. All right. Anybody else would like to comment on this? Okay. Mr. Chuck Knight. Well, of course. Mr. Chuck Knight. So, so, <laughs> just, so just to clear the record, uh, Roy. So just to clear the record and to clear my decision and my vote on this, I'm not being influenced by the ref. 
I'm being influenced by what I see on the video. Obviously, these are all professionals that are in the ring to protect, I, I'll reiterate, to protect the fighter in those circumstances. And I strongly believe that's what he was doing here. And so to set a president to overturn a fight uh, for reasons other than protecting the fight, to me, is not the reason why I'm here. Uh, and so that's why I strongly stand by my vote to stand, let the decision stand, because I really feel this was the right decision, regardless of anything else. Uh, I mean, the second issue that was addressed here, which I thought, you know, it definitely maybe something to address through education or what have you in terms of the, the, the gender discrimination, I don't think applies to this. I really strongly don't think this is the case here at all. And so um, I think it, it, it doesn't set a good precedent for our commissioners to be talking about our refs or to make references about our refs, whether it's her or anybody else, uh, in a context of gender discrimination when there's no history about it, I take issue uh, to that. So uh, I'm hoping that that is not the direction that this commission wants to go on. I support education and I support uh, you know all the training you want uh, for our refs when it comes to gender discrimination or anything else like that. Uh, but to, to take this as a case of that being so is, is just, to me, unfair. Uh, so anyway, I'll... I'll lay off the podium here and I'll say that I'll stick to my vote and it's not based on the reasons that Roy is, is uh, alleging there is. There, this was not a missed call in my opinion. Okay. Um, Mr. Swanson, Mr. Foster, do you have any final comments before I call for the vote? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. The standard here is whether there's a violation of the laws and rules um, relating to the sport and otherwise the uh, under uh, Rule 368, um, the decision of the referee will stand in the absence of a finding that there's been a violation. Right. So thank you for making that point. Mr. Foster, you want to add anything? No, sir. Wait. Okay. It's any, uh, any who violates the laws of the state of California. It is not just relating to the sport. 390. You said 368. 368. We're under 368. You didn't say 390. But we were given 390. But that's for another matter. Yeah, that's not the So, okay. We have, again, in front of us this, this 368. We have a specific request. A presentation has been made. I happen to agree with everything Commissioner Ayala said for a lot of good reasons. And let me also add that it has nothing to do with this hearing or Aspen Lad or anything that was presented here by an individual commissioner, by the way, that we have a gender discrimination task force uh, or subcommittee. There's a, there's a general public uh, symposium, whatever we call it this evening. Um, we are very much aware and are paying attention to those issues, but that is not what this matter on agenda item number five before us is about. Um, and so please let's call for the vote on the motion to not change the decision. Commissioner Ayello? Yes. Vice Chair Lyman? Nay. Chairman Carvelli? I'm Aye. sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. You're Aye. Aye. Doc, uh, Commissioner and Dr. Williams? Aye. Commissioner Senior Kedes? No. Sir, motion, motion is three. Yeah, we did. Okay. We did. I guess. Um, the the decision stands uh, that motion uh, carries. That's yes, important. three three to two, sir. Aspen, thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. We understand why you made and did what you did, but I hope you understand where we're coming from. The mission of, of our commission is health and safety of fighters. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everyone. Agenda item number six. View impossible action on the skills suspension for boxer Amir Ranjdar. Mr. Foster. Um, sir, uh, we need to uh, get, get Amir on the phone. He went to the Sacramento office. Um, so um, so I, I can give you a little background yeah, on so this. Yeah, so commissioners, Andy informed me earlier that this gentleman mistakenly showed up at our Sacramento office, I guess, instead of coming, realizing that the hearing was here, even though he had, was notified. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay uh, 
uh, with getting them on the phone. If you all have no objections, commissioners, any objections to that? No. Hmm? Uh, yeah, I can. I can summarize this while we. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Should, should, okay, I'll wait till. You're wait. I, I'm recommending he wait. Okay. Then, if you could recall the matter when he joins the phone. Hey, Lee. Young speaker. Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have him here sitting here. We are just sitting watching the meeting right now. I'm sitting with him. Okay, hi Lee. Hi Amir. Hi Chef. How are you? Good, thank you. Okay, Mr. Foster. Um, Mr. Chair, um, Amir, um, Amir is applying. Uh, he wants to be. Uh, he wants to be able to uh, compete in California again as a uh, as a uh, Muay Thai fighter. You guys, would you mind just being? Quiet and Put listen. It on mute, perhaps, until you speak. Until we call on you. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lee. Yes, you, guys, sir. you guys go on mute, and also know that you have a 30-second delay in what we're saying and what you're seeing. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Mr. Foster. So, um, so I went. I, I suspended him um, after his last loss, and um, but I, I, I actually um, I think it was in front of the last commission meeting down here uh, in Los Angeles. I um, went to the went to his gym the day before when I landed and and evaluated his his sparring. I don't do that very often, but in this particular case, uh, because I was denying somebody the right to make a living and he had a fight lined up, if I would approve him, I went to the gym and watched him. Okay? I want to be very clear about Mr. Mr. Ranjar. He has skills. Okay? So I'm not, I'm, it, 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 the, the, his skills, and he obviously knows how to, to do Muay Thai and he knows how to, 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 to box some. That's, that's not what I'm saying to the commissioners. I just feel like he doesn't have quite the level needed to box and fight at the professional levels, at the levels that, 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 that he's been, he's been um, placed at. He has a series of knockouts and um, of, of being stopped and I went and watched him and I and he has skills but he gets hit quite a quite a, quite a bit at least that's my view so what we did was I said okay maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way I'm gonna have somebody else go and evaluate him without prefacing I had Sean Wells lead inspector you all know go out six months later roughly and evaluate him again Sean called me with the same recommendations as Andy. I'm just not, not, not sure, you know. And so, I'm here begrudgingly. I hate, I hate doing this to a fight. It's the first time in my my tenure with you with you that this has happened, where I'm saying, look, I don't think this person should be granted a license based on skill. However, he has the appeal rights to the full commission and. That's why we're here today. You have a recommendation. You want to go over that, please? My recommendation is that 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 my my decision not to grant him a license stand, and my my recommendation would be the commission can overrule me, but my recommendation to you all is that you not grant him a license either. What's okay. his record? Well, Muay Thai. Muay Thai is 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 better. Now I'm going to tell you his boxing record, but he's applying. You know, he's a little better in Muay Thai, but it's hard to tell. But his boxing record officially. Now he claims some of these weren't 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 on there, but 
is 0-24. He's a plus 7 on the box and severity index. So we're in the questions, but you're going to keep going. What? Oh, questions? sorry. No, it's okay. Go. I was just going to call for questions. So it's all yours. <laughs> it's all yours. What was his movie tie record? Uh, there's not a record on that, ma'am, because of the of the database and because BoxRec just started recording that recently and he's been suspended. We we don't we don't have that. You could you could ask him that. He certainly has a lot of experience in Muay Thai. You can look him on on YouTube. And and look, just because I told you his boxing record, I don't want this commissioner the commission to think that this man can't fight. He he has some skill. I just don't think he should be competing at the professional level in California. Cool. You can train Florida. people. The floor is yours. <laughs> Give me the gavel. Take it. Uh, how, uh, can you tell me how old Mr. Ranch is? I believe, I believe ma'am, he's 39. He'll be, uh, he'll be 40 soon. Anything else right now? You good right now? Commissioner Ayala, we're on this side of the table. Dr. Williams? No, no questions. Commissioner Martha? Okay, nothing there. Okay, um, then I will ask for a motion. Mr. Ranjar. I, I'd like to do a motion. Okay. Yeah, so. We'll let him talk this time. Oh, sorry. Let's do a motion. I, sorry, yeah. someone, does I take no, someone else again? No, you're fine. <laughs> they, were, they were interrupting you. Okay. Um, I guess, Mike, well, it's not a, well, a question is, assuming that um, we affirm the decision uh, not to issue him a license. Is there anything that prohibits him from perhaps learning some more defensive skills and coming back and reapplying next year? No, ma'am. There, he could certainly work on that, and we could reevaluate him and 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 be back here in six months, a year, whatever your pleasure is. Okay. Well, so, with that information, I'd like to make a motion. Um, uh, to affirm our executive officer's decision not to grant a license. We have a second? Second. We have a second. Okay, uh, we can invite uh, members of the public now to comment on this motion. And then I will turn, uh, ask Lee to turn off his mute, and they're 30 seconds behind. Does anybody here want to comment? Okay, no members of the public comment on this side. So, Lee, are you there? Yes, sir, we're here. Okay, so now uh, here's a chance for Amir to make any statement he'd like to make. Would you like to make? Um, one of the statements I think he's, he wants to make is he has a screenshot of his box work where he says he's 7 and 24. I went to pull it up and I'm not able to, to authenticate it at this moment. That's what he's stating. Yeah, and, and he's obviously not here, so that's okay. But he, the, if he, if he has something to say, here's his chance. Yeah, can you What's wrong? What happened? About your license, so is there anything? About my license, I think I should continue using my license. Because in most states, I am 724. Oh, yes, I am. It's not about it's not about your record. It's about your skill level in boxing. It's that they're dressing. They can ask my coach, friendly notes. I swan many times over there, and you know. Okay. His, his comment you. has been, um, what it, it really isn't a, def a, a and defense. They can't he see. says you can just Lee, ask his coach. Lee. And they can find me on YouTube. Okay. And your YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. They look at all everyone's he, thing. He wants you to watch his video on YouTube. Lee. Lee. Yeah. Just let him speak. I'm here. Okay? Just let Amir speak, please. We'll, we'll ask you for clarification. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Can you just look at my fighting video on YouTube, please? And you judge me by YouTube video. I have a skill or not. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Amir. We appreciate your coming to the office and making your statement. Okay. Lee, you can go back on mute please. Thank you. All right, I have a uh, motion, and uh, you can call the roll. And the motion is to remind everyone we're voting on is to um, not overturn the executive officer's uh, suspension of Mr. Ranzar's license. 
Please call the roll. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ayella? Aye. Vice Chair Lehman? Aye. Commissioner and Dr. Williams? Aye. Commissioner Senior Quito? Aye. Chairman Carvelli? Aye. Okay, agenda item number seven. View impossible action on the goodbye guys on the USADA suspension for mixed martial artist Francisco Rivera from August in 2016. Is Francisco here? Um, is Mr. Rivera here? And any representatives? No. Mr. Rivera, just sit right up front behind Andy. That'd be great. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Foster. Um, Mr. Chairman, this was an interesting case. And, and again, um, uh, just, just to get, set this up, there's been quite a few of these cases that, that I'm sure staff typically deals with. This is yet another one of those interesting situations where we're here with the members deciding because I didn't feel like this was staff's decision to make. Um, Mr. Rivera was suspended for clambuterol by the United States Anti-Doping Agency for four years back in 2016. Now he got the aggravating uh, circumstances clause because, uh, and he can tell it better, but he essentially lied to, you, to USADA and they, they gave him the max. They gave him the four years. Now, clambuterol, this commission probably has more familiarity with that drug than any, any, any in the country. We're familiar with it. This was not tainted meat. It was nine, between five and nine nanograms. That's a therapeutic dose. I don't think he's denying that, that piece of it. Um, but, but, you know, he, he's here requesting a license from the California State Athletic Commission, his home state where he lives. And staff wasn't going to give it to him because he has a USALA suspension sitting on his record. So he's now appealing to the full commission, and that, that's his right as a, as, a, as a member of the public seeking a license. And... Um, He's here, to, he's here to make the case. If you have any questions about what we, the commission, does ordinarily with Plan Butyrol, we can talk about that now or we can talk Why about Why don't you that. go ahead and tell us, then we'll have Mr. Rivera. This had been my case probably a year. You would have got suspended a year. You would have recommended a one-year suspension if it was your case? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, that's okay. what I would have gave him. And if he could have appealed to you guys if he thought that was too much, it I might, I might have I might have went 18 months with the aggravating circumstances. Okay, I might have. Um, I just want to be clear about this because this goes to a broader issue. These doping suspensions take away fighters' right to make a living. Okay, that that we have to be very. We we have to balance. I feel like this commission certainly the options we've taken is we're trying to balance. Um, um, the right to make a living with punitive action. And if there's a way to balance that, i.e. more drug tests and that type of thing, I think that's a better mix for, for, for everybody is a broad statement. Mr. Chairman, if you have any further questions, I'm here. Any other questions for Andy before we bring up Mr. Rivera? Commissioner? Um, I guess I have a question. Okay, so what is the relationship between USADA and individual state athletic commissions? Um, we, they, we typically, and they, they drug test them. We, we, you know, they're a, the collector for us. We typically follow their suspensions. They're part of one of our promoters' drug testing programs. We have historically always followed their their suspension. To my knowledge, this is the first time that somebody with a USADA suspension, but not suspended by by the state has came to the state asking for a license. And um, that's what makes this case unusual. That's why staff wasn't going to deal with it. That's why he's here talking to you guys. Have other athletic commissions uh, issued licenses when there's a uh, fighter is still under use out of suspension? Not to knowledge? my knowledge, ma'am. Not to my knowledge. Um, I, again, that's what, again, makes this somewhat of a novel case. Mm -hmm. Anything but else before we have well, Mr. Rivera make a statement? We have had disagreements with them before, with USADA. Sure. Yeah. 
it's not that we always agree with their decisions either. Well, I mean, just to just to point out, to go further, the, the Walt Harris suspension uh, that we issued for four months back, where I mean, I had I had proved that was a tainted supplement. I mean, I that there was that that was not questionable at that point. Um, you know, I I told Jeff Cook, you saw this. Um, um, legal counsel that we were going to go four months on that and that if if they went more than that because you know because of the right to make a living and all those arguments and he had proved it was a tainted supplement and and and, and all of these these things um that that you know i think the state would you know certainly staff would have an issue with with trying to raise something on one of our licensees and we've also had issues with how inconsistent sometimes they are, right? I mean, sometimes they go along, sometimes they, I mean, like, look at Josh Barnett. <clears throat> Again, no, doping and doping, doping actions are not a science. The doping control is a science. The doping testing is a science, but the actions themselves are not scientific. They're up to human interpretation. and. You know, I, I want to point this out just so you get the thing. USADA has a drug testing role. Their role is to, to test people and to, to, and, and to issue punishments on behalf of, of the promoter because the promoter has taken and spent a lot of money to clean the sport up and they won't clean sport. Okay, so that's a credit to the, to the UFC for, for doing that and spending that money. The Athletic Commission's role you have the protection of the public as your primary function. I mean, he's part of the public. I don't have to lecture you about that. You already know. All I'm saying is the role is somewhat different. It's more broad, I think, when the state gets involved and we're talking about issues of licenses. At that, he's he's basically served a three-year sentence already. Three years and three months, I believe. Sorry, so. Yes, sir. So, uh, Andy, do you think it's appropriate? Uh, I think I, I think I know the answer. I think you said yeah, but the follow-up question will be interesting. Do you think it's appropriate to levy additional suspension to an individual who has uh, violated, but then covered up or falsified documents to cover up, and then gone like this additional miles as part of the as part of the cover-up? I, I do. As well as I think it's appropriate if they come clean and admit it to cut people breaks, like to to reduce the initial sentence. You, you, if they come clean immediately, or if they come yeah right clean immediately, at some point. like if right. I call them up on the phone and I and I said, listen, I've got a positive test. You know what? I did it. I think that goes into the thing because you don't have to to you know they come in and then that way you can put people in a drug testing program make sure they're clean and if you can make sure and ensure to the public that people are clean then I think that you the Commission not this particular case this Commission in general can restore can so I, I read through the, the documents but just to refresh my memory how for how long what was the period of time that uh, that uh, mr. Rivera maintained that he was innocent and participated in this kind of cover-up scheme? Well, it was quite a long time. I mean, was, uh, I don't have the dates, right? I mean, I have the dates. I don't have them marked down. Seems like it was, was it close to a year. R like roughly. It was, yeah. a, it was close to a year. A year? Let's see. It might have been. But to answer your basic question, I, I absolutely think it's okay if you know with the with the with cover-ups to add punishment. Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Rivera. Year and a half. Do you have to come up and say something to the yes. commission? Year Would you introduce half. yourself, please? Uh, Francisco Rivera, uh, former UFC fighter. Uh, I just want to thank the commission for having me, and um, I just want to once again say sorry for the uh, uh, circumstances that I went through a couple years ago. And uh, I take full responsibility and um, I'm willing to do anything I can, you know, to for, for the commission or for any promotion that needs me to do any drug tests at any time, anywhere. Um, 
I, mean, I now teach classes to young kids and and uh, I try to help them and, and make sure that they don't do any mistakes that I've done in my career. Uh, I've been fighting for many years and I've had 19 fights, professional fights, and I've fought for the UFC nine times and and this one time I made a mistake. Uh, we all make mistakes and I take full responsibility for what I did and my actions. And I have two little kids that, and that I'm trying to take care of and this is how I was making my living. And and I feel like four years is just, I, I'm trying to do everything I can to support my family. And I feel like fighting is the only thing I know. I, that's all I grew up knowing and training and fighting. So there's nothing else that I would want to do to support my family, this is just to fight again. Mr. Rivera, are you willing to take questions from the commissioners? Sure. Okay. Commissioners? Any questions from Mr. Rivera? Um, can you expound a little bit more about what you've been doing since your suspension? Uh, I've been teaching at my gym, all in MMA in Buena Park, California, every single day, um, helping my kids with sports and soccer and, and um, just trying to take care of my family and teach and train and continue to train and help other fighters with their fights and professional fights and make sure they don't do any mistakes that you know, I've done and, and try to go forward and, and accept my responsibility for everything I've done ever since the, for, for the last three and a half years I've, that's what I've been doing can you like maybe help us and talk about a little bit more of the community service are you active in yes, clubs yes, or groups yes. or your church help um, us. my brother works at the boys and girls club and I go over there and help out when I can give kids rides home uh, I help out with my son's soccer team in the city, um, give, pick up kids, take, them kid, take the kids to pizza parties and try to throw pizza parties for them and, and help out you know, with the kids as much as I can and give back to the, any kids that come in to train at our gym and can't afford it. I just you know, sign, make them sign a waiver and just let them train for a few weeks to see if they like it, kind of help their parents get back on their feet. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, that's all. Thank you. Commissioners, any other um, questions? He didn't mention this, but I first met him with Mike Rush. They were working, helping a charity that my husband and I work with for at-risk youth. I didn't know who he was. He didn't tell me who he was. Didn't tell me anything about this. Didn't mention this at all, actually, for years. Yeah. I didn't know anything about this until recently. Um, which is, took me by surprise, but they've been helping this charity for years, and I didn't know about this, so. Any other comments from Mr. Ms. Rivera? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we'll have a motion, and we'll invite uh, members of the public to comment on that motion. So do I have a motion from any of the commissioners? I, I guess, Andy, you are not making any recommendation. Or are you? Or, or are, are you? you? Because you did answer, I think, Dr. Williams' question, or you volunteered that you would probably have given a lesser uh, suspension. Well, the, I, when I volunteered, I just want to be clear, that's what our general, that's what, you know, it, it, we, we see claim butyrol cases from time to time. and. We, we typically don't do four, we've never done four years on a doping violation, in so, period. So basically what Mr. Rivera is asking for is for us to waive the 10, uh, ten months between now and next August, approximately. Uh, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that, that's what he's asking, but I don't have a recommendation, sir. We, I would have gave him a license if I would have, you know, I would administratively gave him a license. I have the authority to do so, but I'd, He's here asking one from you. Do you, you feel like there are any kind of uh, repercussions or consequences in not going along with the USADA suspension for the, this commission, for other fighters? I mean, I think I, I, don't, like the, I don't like the look that, that, that California would, I don't like, I mean, I wouldn't want the look the, the media to think, though, California is supporting fighters that dope or whatever, that's not something that I would hope that, the, I mean, that's, that's always a risk. But we, we, I don't, at the same time, the reason he's here, I don't think the commission should be um, 
the commission should have this decision and worrying about what the media is going to write or what they're going to say shouldn't be the focus of, of your decision making. It's whether you believe that this fighter has been rehabilitated. Now, one thing I would I would add, and I'm not this is this is not this is a recommendation to you that if you choose to license this person that you order staff to make sure that he has several drug tests before his next bout, um, just to ensure that he's clean. I mean, he can't even be granted the license without a drug test anyway right now, but that'd be a condition of the license. I'd like to suggest maybe for uh, the next coming year, 12 months sure. period. You so a my, I motion that we um, give a license to Mr. Rivera and state that for the next 12 month period, which might be two licensure periods, that uh, that he be drug tested both before and after uh, each fight. I have a question just in terms of uh, like the practicality of all this, right? Uh, got 10 months left in the suspension. Uh, technically, if we, because it's a USADA suspension for four years, if we grant the license, you'd only be able to fight in California. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. So you'd have to go to other states if you wanted to fight in other states. So, so if your goal is to go back and fight for the UFC, and you know, support your family that way, then you're kind of limited, obviously, to any California events for the duration of the 10 months. I know it's kind of a personal decision. I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, because of uh, what could be said in the media or what have you, or the perception of uh, licensing somebody that's been suspended and has got 10 months left. Uh, you know, I support the fact that, you know, you've done a lot of community service and you obviously seem ready to go and what have you. Just wondering the practicality of it all and what the thinking is uh, I mean, are there California events coming up in 10 months? Probably yes. Um, so I, I guess the main question is just in terms of return of it. Maybe I'd like to hear from you in terms of the, the return. Like, if we're going to give you the license, what is your goal or how do you see this helping over the next 10 months uh, as opposed to waiting the 10 months to serve out the uh, remainder of the, uh, uh, the suspension? Yeah. Chair, is that okay? Sure. Um, yeah, I feel like if I take more time off, um, it could affect my career. You know, I, I, I feel like if I keep waiting, I might not be ready to fight, get ring rust. So I feel like the time off could affect my career and, and not make any money and lose and, 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 and not be able to support my family as to opposed to getting ready now because I've been training and I've been in the gym helping other fighters get ready for the fights. And say in the 10 months, I could fight twice here in California, three times in California. And, you know, the UFC could possibly re-sign me or a bigger promotion like Bellator or, or Pride or any big promotion. And I can get maybe get a bigger deal just because my name already. And I don't want to wait the 10 months and fight for a bigger promotion and have the ring rust and have the nerves and be, you know, a little... You know, the time off could affect affect my performance. Plus, how old are you now? I'm. I just turned 38 about uh, last Wednesday. So then, to my age too. So I feel Happy like. Birthday. You know, oh, thank you. So, so this gives you an opportunity, but there is uh, potentially the risk of you know any of these Bellator UFCs where I'm saying, oh, you know, you've got 10 months left in your suspension with USADA. We're going to wait, even if you have a license in California. Do you, I mean, do you, Anybody can answer this, Andy or you, Francisco, I'm not sure. Uh, trying to understand again, if we're going to make this exemption, right, uh, is it worth the investment? Is it going to be worth your time to even get it done? Yes, it will. I mean, I know that's a straight answer, but I, I'd like to hear a little bit more detail maybe from Andy or what have you. I mean, it's, well, let me ask it a different way. Will Bellator, UFC, these large organizations take into account before signing a contract with any fighter? their suspend this suspension i mean i can i can almost unequivocally tell you the ufc is not going to resign him with a U, with the usada suspension sitting out there no. okay bellator doesn't look at the usada suspensions the same way as 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 state athletic commissions do they they rely on the state athletic commission only they don't 
they essentially, I mean, I, Mohegan, Mike Mazzulli, runs uh, their stuff overseas. And uh, he allowed uh, Krokop to fight, I believe, if he was, uh, he, he had one of these USADA suspensions. Okay. We, I, your staff, your executive staff, do not. That's why he's here. Got it. Thank you. So, what, yeah. I'm sorry, one more question Mr. Rivera, from Mr. Rivera. In there, uh, oh, so, Mr. Foster stated that one of the considerations that he would make in terms of evaluating this whole process is your quote unquote your right to earn a living so uh, what if you don't mind me asking what have you been doing over the last three years to earn a living have you been able have you been working yes i've been teaching full class full-time classes at my gym yes and you, you can pay for that uh, yes i get paid from that from the owner of the gym yes so and, and i also do private classes with uh, so so is it accurate to say that you're able to earn a living this just would be better for you for you and your career correct correct okay i i, I need a second on your motion Do you, would you like to repeat your second. motion second you remember can, it? I, can okay. I ask one more question yeah um, what are you planning to go to any other state athletic commissions to to make the same uh as of right now um i'm from california born and raised um uh, I I came to Cal um, my first so six now. fights were all in California, so I just tend to uh, fight and train and train here in California. Thanks. So, Mr. Rivera, we have a motion to give your license back with some requirements, which we're going to talk about in a second on drug testing, and we have a second, so we're going to vote on that. We're going to have the, the public's going to be uh, invited to comment on that. You um, you understand? what Dr. Williams was asking you about before. It's not just the fact that you admitted what you did because you got caught, but you waited a year to kind of fess up to it, right? You're correct. So what do you think about that? What, uh, would, you, what would you do different? I was just, what do you tell kids about that? Uh, I just admitted, I just admit that I was just in a, a wrong place at the time, mentally, uh, physically. Uh, me and my kid's mom were going through stuff. So it was just a, a really bad time, place in my life. And I just was not in the right mindset during that time. I made a mistake, and I take full responsibility for it. So the part about this, you know, kind of waiting a while to, to admit it, what, what, what were you thinking on that one? What were you hoping for? Uh, at peace for myself, you know, and my family. Um, I knew it was wrong. Uh, I knew I, instead of just sitting there waiting, I should have came forward a long time ago and... You know, it was my mistake for not doing that when it happened, and I learned from it. Okay, thank you. Appreciate thank you. your appreciate your honesty. Okay, uh, members of the public uh, can come and comment. Mr. Mazzuli. Yeah, actually. You're gonna come up and introduce yourself, sir. Yes. Sir. You know better than that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> sir. Okay. Uh, actually, I would just like to comment, Commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike Mazzuli, Mohegan Tribe Athletic Department in Connecticut. Um, I must admit, he's absolutely right concerning Krokop. I did test him overseas before he fought uh, for us over there or for Bellator when I was regulating it. And I can honestly stand here and state that I would license him if he ever came to Mohegan in Connecticut uh, and allow him to fight. Because I, I believe four years is an awful long time. I agree that one year suspension with six or seven, eight months extra for lying, absolutely. But you can't ruin a kid's career over something so um, you know, drastic. I think four years is very drastic. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to comment? Really? That's it? We're going to be, oh, come on up, sir. We're happy to hear from anyone. Hello, I'm Mike Rush, and I've been with uh, Francisco Rivera from day one, still one of his coaches. Um, Again, I, I also agree four years I thought was an awful long time. Um, we do have offers on the table. We're just waiting, hoping, keeping our fingers crossed he'll get licensed today. And we do have several, a couple offers to fight in California. So if he could have that opportunity to, to get back in there, greatly appreciate it. I feel like he's definitely learned his lesson. I talk with him every single day. I'm with him every day. <clears throat> I know the remorse that he has and it's true remorse, and uh, I can guarantee this won't happen again. And def definitely the drug testing before and after, completely acceptable. Thank That's you. It. Thank you very much. 
Uh, let's give a chance for Andy to come back. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, rule 399 provides some guidance on this issue. Can you explain, please? Okay. Yes, that rule relates to the denial or reinstatement of a license, which is not the exact situation here. However, it does set forth certain factors to consider on a case-by-case -case basis to see if a fighter is rehabilitated for purposes of licensure. Um, those factors are as follows. The nature and severity of the acts or crimes that led to the denial or revocation of the license. Um, evidence of any acts or crimes committed subsequent to the acts or crimes that led to the denial or revocation of the license. The time elapsed since the acts or crimes that either led to the denial of the license or the revocation of the license or occurred thereafter. The extent to which the applicant or petitioner, as the case may be, um, complied with any terms of probation, parole, restitution, or other sanctions. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, evidence, if any, of rehabilitation. So you feel that we are within 399 if we choose to reinstate him? Those are the relevant factors. While the rule does not, on its face, apply in its, this situation, the case law um, relating to evaluating rehabilitation um, uh, demonstrates that those are generally the elements that uh, apply. Um, so even though the rule um, relates to a slightly different circumstance, that is, where a, there's an appeal from the denial of an application or if, an ap if a license has been revoked and someone is seeking reinstatement of a license, I think the same principles apply. So I, the commission could safely apply those principles here. Okay, thank you. So Andy, can um, maybe any of the commissioners have, can we be a little more specific on drug testing, what he's gonna be required to do if? I said, I'll say it again. For 12 months, not which might be two licensure periods, he's drug tested both before and after each fight. Any more frequency than that? Monthly, every other month? Or I think that's weekly. too much of a burden on us. Yes. Oh, wait, but you're asking Andy. You're um, not asking me. <laughs> no, I wasn't asking you. I, I, I understood what you said. I'm getting punchy here. <laughs> And do, yeah, I mean, what do you think practically? I think, I think practically, um, you know, either before, and, and I like the after, but I think the after doesn't have to be that night because if we've got them before the fight, which is typically due because you, after, after a fight or fight, it's hard, it's hard to get a sample because they're dehydrated. Um, you know, after can mean out of competition. So what, what, I, what I would suggest is, um, you know, tw uh, however many times he fights before and after out of competition with a minimum of six tests during that time a, a minimum That's what I was wondering about. A, a, a minimum of six tests three of the six be full water panels are you okay with amending your motion to include that specificity three of the six tests for what i'm sorry three of the six tests be full world world anti-doping okay. agency panels um i accept that friendly amendment and, and the second exemption? Sure. Let's see. Okay. So, Mr. Rivera, we're about to vote on uh, the possibility of you getting your license back 10 months early after having served over three years um, with this testing uh, regime that we will require. Um, for the benefit of the public, just as in the other issue, before us is a request by the fighter. Uh, that we are considering it has nothing to do with, nor really it is, is it our concern about how you make a living or your future opportunities. We feel like you've done time served and you've rehabilitated, is I think what we're considering. You understand? Okay. So with that, we will call for a vote. Commissioner Ayala? Yes. Vice Chair Lehman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Williams? Aye. Yes. Commissioner Senior Keita? Uh, Chairman Corelli. Hi. Congratulations, Mr. Rivera. The best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, -huh. uh it is um, approaching the noon hour.
Might be a good time. It's to break past lunch. the noon hour. One hour? It's past the noon hour. Ah, okay. One hour lunch break. We will be adjourned and back in one hour. Thank you, Caesar.